Hello and welcome to another edition of Bergen Stages Television, our entertainment magazine here at Bergen Community College. I'm Jim Bumgarner, your host, and today we're hosting two very special guests who are part of a production that we're doing here at the college, a zany farce uh, by Georges Fedeau with an adaptation by David Ice called A Flea in Her Ear. So please welcome to the show Kevin Bergen and Kayla Haskins. Welcome, guys. Hi. How are you doing? Work. Very good. good. How are rehearsals going? Great. Very great. Yeah, so far so good? Yes. Mm. Good. Well, we're going to get to talk more specifically about the show, but I'd like for our audience to kind of know you guys a little bit more. So, Kayla, why don't we start with you since you're right here. Where where did you start? Where did you start doing theater? Where, where you... I started doing theater in uh, Fort Lee, New Jersey. Uh, actually, in middle school, you have to audition for the high school academy. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I got, that was... 2008, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's, I've pretty much stuck through it uh -huh. all the way through here and as a Bergen alumni uh -huh. and just trying to figure out the next move. And you're two years out? Two, two I think a year. Just a year? A year. Yeah, so just a year? Yeah, 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 yeah. And Kevin, where did you get started? Um, I did a lot of various uh, theater companies in Essex County, like the Montclair Bloomfield area. Mm -hmm. And now here I am after, I guess, oh, no, at, at Bergen now. Yeah. Did you do middle school? Uh, uh, nothing. I didn't have anything in yeah, middle school. school. I wasn't really in high school too long. I did two shows in high school. Uh -huh. I wasn't in high school too long. What'd though. you do? I did How to Succeed in Business, and then I did Honk, the musical. Uh huh. Yeah. Great. How to succeed. Who'd you play in? I was Bud Frump. Oh, good. Succeed. What a great, great, <laughs> great role there. Um, good. And and you have some great mentors too. You you you've worked with some terrific people. Who yeah. Who you uh, with? Karina Sowers Adler. She's a cabaret singer in the city, and right. she uh, has her own theater company now, Nickery Studios and Productions. And that's in Bloomfield. In Bloomfield. Yeah. Okay. Outside of the Oakside Bloomfield Cultural Center, it's like a the mansion. It's like a mansion, but for the town to use. Oh, neat. But it's it's out of there. Uh -huh. And I I was student ambassador on like I guess kind of the founding of it, the student ambassador. So yeah, uh -huh. I like that. And I, I'm getting into that area now too. And cabaret performing. Well, yeah, cabaret performing and, also and, and theater, and but also like the uh, I guess production, the administration type of stuff. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Good. And Kayla, what do, what shows did you do while you were in middle school or high school? Do you remember? Uh, high school. Um, I we I actually was a uh, one of the pioneers for a, a, a one act play festival. Oh, good. It was uh, something that my acting teacher was very passionate at the time being. Uh -huh. um, full length productions were always very fun, but she loved uh, the simplicity and like the quickness of one act plays. Uh, so we did that. I believe the show that I was in, like my school was very. Uh, into anti-bullying campaigns, so mm -hmm, good. Uh, we performed. I performed uncool. Uh huh. Um, I was in a King and I. Oh, I was a feature dancer nice. with the children. I don't think I knew you danced. But cool. Okay. <laughs> uh huh. Mm. Mm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was King and I. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I was a part of the uh, getting to know you. Uh, ballet with the kids, mm -hmm. and then I also did the Uncle Tom ballet. Well, that's pretty big. Uh, yeah. That's, yeah. And then um, after that, I was in Fort Lee Film Commission's production of Mac and Mabel. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It was actually an honor to be a part of that oh, because nice. the Film Commission is such a huge part of our town and our town's history. Mm -hmm. So being a part of a production based on, you know, because uh, Fort Lee was the original site of Hollywood. Right, right. Wow. And so being a part of it was Amazing. And this is while you were in high school still? Too? Yes. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Yes. But it was outside of the high school, so it sounds like a, you it were It was some... performed on the high school oh, stage because Fort stage. Lee is a very small town. Mm -hmm. We don't have a lot of venues to perform in, but, you know, the high school stage was always open, mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. what we used. Oh, that's cool. And so while you, you were here, because you graduated, uh, you were a theater major. Yes. Um, and you did a couple shows with mm -hmm. us. Uh, what shows did you do? I did Angels in America. Right. That was my first show. Right. Very exciting. Yeah. Um, I did Suburbia on stage. That's right. Complete female stage beauty. Mm -hmm. And then I did... Um, our production, the dining room, uh, the dining the room. room. Yes, yeah. Theater production workshop. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's cool. And and uh, uh, Kevin, what have you done since you've been here? I did Oak Howard just last year. That was yeah, yeah, you amazing. Did that was a great. That uh -huh. was amazing. Uh -huh. the gym. Totally. Um, yeah, that was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Don't and then uh, and now you're doing uh, a flea in A flea in here, which yeah, it's interesting. Good. It's kind of the same. I mean, it's not, you know, this is exactly the same, but it's definitely the same. There's a musical yeah. feeling to do There is. A you're right. Like I, this. Yeah. So you've got to have uh, that energy that you would definitely. take to a musical, I definitely. think. Definitely. You're right. So, so while you're here at Bergen, what kind of training are you getting? You're the newbie. What are you up to? I am kind of the newbie. Um, I think the training here is awesome. I think, especially, 
I came to Bergen like, kicking and screaming, totally. My mom was like, you have to go. Uh -huh. And even like the theater, was, I was like, I, I don't know, it's a community college and everything was like, it's a community college. And the minute I stepped in the classroom, every classroom, like on my first day, I remember I was like, this just clicks and it makes sense. And it's so, underrate, so underrated, yes. completely. Very. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Very. By high school students deciding on college. Yeah, well, parents. I mean, I think by everybody, mm -hmm. but I think especially, and it's just such a smart decision. I mean, not only financially, but I think, for any skill, uh, especially theater, like we can speak for that, mm -hmm. that it's so it's so professional, mm -hmm. really. Oh, that's great, great. And so you're taking basic acting and I've taken basic acting. I'm taking audition workshops now. I've taken I'm taking intro to theater now. I've taken history of musical theater with you. Mm -hmm. um, I've taken makeup and stagecraft, which is awesome. Which is awesome because like people like us who are like, so used to like being on the stage, I really almost find equal love for figuring out what goes on backstage. So, like. It's, I think it's beautiful. That's cool. It's That's really cool. beautiful. And I think you need to know that. You're it's very it. essential. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I wasn't very great at uh, <laughs> stagecraft, <laughs> but I definitely, like, you know, just flying in different pieces from the set. It happened just last night. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just like, oh, yeah, flying in pieces from the set. Right. It's, right. Very, it's very essential for any person, any person involved in theater whatsoever to absolutely be a part of stagecraft. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You have such an appreciation for everything that went yes, on around especially. you. Yes, especially. Plus, in our theater production workshop that you were talking about, you guys did it all. You yes. built that stage. You, you know, so you had to do all the stagecraft, cool. uh, costumes, lighting, and all that to put that piece up. So um, all those skills that you learned while you were here just kind of culminated with that particular Absolutely. production. So that's great to hear. I agree with you. I think sometimes actors think, you know, yeah. don't, don't think besides their acting and don't realize everything else. That's yeah, yeah. you could totally find different facets to like mm -hmm. go into. That's it too. It's so yeah. cool. There's so many other career opportunities that yeah. you know, maybe the acting thing isn't the thing you love the most. Uh, that maybe there's yeah. a design or, or, or another element to, or even just a fly operator <laughs> on the stage uh, kind of thing. That's cool. That's cool. So now I know that you've graduated and you're thinking about uh, the, the next step, which college you're going to go to and that sort of Yes. Thing. It's a very difficult process. I'm so indecisive. Uh, but, you know, Bergen provided such an amazing foundation mm -hmm. that I'm just trying to find something else, like Kevin said, something that clicks. Right, right. Finding because the right school. there's so many uh, options. And I think you do. You walk onto a stage at a school and go, this feels good. I can, yes. I can spend the next couple of years here. Yeah. This, is, this is a good good feeling there. So, Absolutely. You know, I think it's it's worth investigating. But I think you're right. Uh, leaving here with your associate's degree does, in New Jersey, mean every credit you've done here transfers to that school, which is yep. great, uh, so that you go in as a rising junior, so it's it's not like you're having to start from freshman yeah. all over again. And you get to take all theater classes, because you're a theater major, you, you know, that's, <laughs> that's it. honestly you've, the best part. <laughs> you've done all that math and history and social sciences Ooh. and that, all those kind of things that you needed to do, but, you're, but you uh, uh, get to be all theater yes. all day, all Fine night. Life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Kevin, and you also do musical, you're a singer. I do, I do sing. Um, yeah, I do sing. Yeah, very well. I, I, very well, thank yes, you. Yes. I mean, I, sometimes. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> no, I do sing. Like I was saying, Karina Sowers Adler, she's a correct cabaret singer, and she's also my voice teacher. Um, I'll sing, like, she does shows at Jazz Lincoln Center, mm -hmm. and I'll sing there. Oh, nice. Or I'll sing at the Metropolitan Room. Wow. Um, do you yeah. sing just musical I like theater? I, I like, um, well, yeah, musical theater, but that also kind of goes into the Great American Songbook. Uh -huh. So, like, uh, I mean, any kind of standards. Yeah, Gershwin. But I guess they kind of, they would always cross over. Uh -huh. Yeah, Gershwin. Yeah, Berlin, yeah. Kind of nice stuff. to get that book built up. Yeah, I love that. So what are you thinking after? Because you've got another year left. I do have a year, I have about exactly a yep, year yep, left, yep. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking about going more into the arts, arts administration, I guess, theater management route. But I'll always, I think, uh, do perform. I That's do like the, like the cabaret route. Uh -huh. um, I like the idea of kind of writing your own stuff and then getting that out there and saying what you have to say out, out there sure. and then people can see it you uh -huh, know what I mean mm -hmm. um, but I do want to th th make my impact that way yeah say what I have to say well that's so. interesting to get into arts administration which is yeah I love that um, do you think because you were saying oh an actor needs to learn all the stagecraft oh, yeah. and stuff do you think an arts administrator should that's the learn? thing I was telling Tom O'Neill I was like I'm so in love with the machine that I couldn't just major in like theater acting. Mm -hmm. So I didn't, I, got, I still don't know what to do. But so arts administration, I think, is the closest thing I can mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, you need to know the whole machine to do any one part of it. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's like, it's such a beautiful, because I always say like theater or any type of art form is the reflection of life. And life is, in my eyes, so beautiful that you need to like look at all these art forms and be like, wow, that's awesome. Cool, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and appreciate every yeah. aspect of it. Exactly. And that means you need to. And know how to make it. it too, yeah, exactly. Which is good. And, and I think with that training that you're talking about, getting here from stagecraft to acting to stage makeup, 
by the time you're yeah. in an arts administration, you realize what you're looking for when you have to hire those people or Definitely. work with these people. You know what, what talents and skills you're you're looking for there as well. Yeah, that's cool. so. Are we helping uh, making this decision? <laughs> oh gosh, <laughs> arts administration. Who thought? It just got worse. <laughs> <laughs> and it just got Don't worse. mean to make it work. Don't mean to make it work <laughs> at all. Uh, <laughs> so what? Uh, this is going to be kind of not a trick question, but more of what made you or when did you know acting was what you wanted to do what was it do you remember a moment in your and I'll look at both of you because uh, either of you can answer that a moment you went this is this is what I want to do and it could be when you're three years old or 13 or, or was there a time I stumped I mean you. Well, stumped I mean the guess when I was little cool. I was always like I want to be like an actor you know like I'll be an actor because of watching TV because of watching TV uh -huh. totally uh -huh. and then I think you get like acting classes and you do like shows and you realize, oh, this is cool. And like, there's a minute, and there is like that moment in that show mm -hmm. where you're like, wow, you're like totally in the character. Like I remember like I was in The Apple Tree, which is like yeah. this old Bach and Harnick uh -huh. show. And I was the snake. And it was like just a little, it was like a little role, but I was like, I feel like I could, it's like, it's like this high you almost get from performing. Sure. And you're totally somebody else. Uh -huh. And you're like, this is really cool. It's really, uh, yeah, it's That's really neat, cool. that's neat. So oh, it was right. while you were in the midst of this show. Yeah, and I was like, this is, and the people are listening to you, and they're like, they're laughing, and not only like that, like, like they're, you're making people think, you have such power, I guess. Mm -hmm. But it's also just the creative process, the work that goes into it, and then it finally gets people get to see it. And yeah, it's so yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And support of friends that, that think it did, was yeah. there anything that kind of came to you? Went, oh, there were like several moments. Oh, good, good, um, good. I think when I was two, I believe, my mom tells this story all the time. Uh, we were in a crowded restaurant, and I wasn't shy at all as a child, so I just, I just belted out, Mommy, Mommy, guess what? And I sang the entire Barney song. I stood up on my chair and sang the entire Barney song. And everybody loved that. And then the that restaurant got so quiet, and I just, I was just like, okay, now applaud. And then I like bowed and did everything. And then, wow. you know, throughout the year, because I've never really been exposed. You have children who are very exposed to theater when they're young. Mm -hmm. I had little, mm -hmm. like, ex like, little tiny, like, venues here and there where I saw it. But um, I think the first time that I really felt it, felt it, was my first Broadway show, which was Aida. Mm -hmm. Wow. And cool. just, like, hearing, like, the power in, like, the actress's voice and just, like, I, I was just drawn. I was just, like, <gasps> I just... So that was your first Broadway show, yes. Aida, which is great, the Tim Rice, uh, 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 Elton John um, yes. uh, musical. Cool, cool. What was yours? Do you remember your first? I don't remember. So my, yeah, my, my grandmother brings me to shows still. Like We've seen like over 100 Broadway shows, and I've had that. You've got a great grandma. Exposure. She's, she's, yeah. She's, she's, yeah, yeah, and yeah. she's like exposed me since, since a young age. But I think my very first one, believe it or not, was probably like The Lion King. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, you guys are so young. That was my second. That was my second. That was, that was your second. second? So, so musicals, obviously, or, uh, I guess everybody tends to go to Broadway to see a musical. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But do you remember the first time seeing live performers? Were it people coming to your classroom? Was oh, it anything like that? Oh. I don't know. I, 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 I have a fond memory of yeah. I was walking down the street. Uh, I lived down in Panama at the time. I was walking down the street. I was like... 12 and suddenly I heard people talking in a room I opened the room and they were in rehearsal or something I thought this wow. is so cool live people doing this I didn't know that that's what I wanted to get into but it was such a cool moment that I had never experienced that my parents didn't take me to shows I, I that yeah. was not part of a what well, we did TVs and movies were kind of the, the thing that we did yeah. but but I just remember how cool seeing live people do it and and I know kids came they, later they come to the classroom and do bullying uh, shows yeah. or these these road companies come in and do that sort of thing yeah but we did a lot of that too in, in my high school we uh, my acting teacher was also very passionate about that as well mm -hmm. so we channeled it into performance mm -hmm. we uh, filmed a lot of films and we actually had Q&A's for people. We wrote skits um, on our own. So oh, cool. it was very, yeah. Cool, cool. And I think you guys are, there's a, a, there's a little boy walking down the hallway yeah. looking at you and going, oh, this is what I want to do by watching you. And it's kind of neat that you just kind of keep uh, paying it forward basically, yeah. is, is mm -hmm. that you're, you're there for the for the next group of people. So cool. So so now we're going to get to talking about a flea in her ear. Um, and it's Woo. complicated little plot there. <laughs> it's um, very complicated. Uh, <laughs> but you're having fun. You're in the rehearsal process now uh, uh, of, a, of a flea in her mm -hmm. ear. Um, can we just talk about the casting? process. Uh, Ken Bonifonce is directing it. It's a crazy farce. And uh, how was the audition? Uh, it was, it's interesting, I mean, especially because, I mean, I went into it not really knowing. I tried to do my research before, but it was interesting because uh, 
It was so hard. I was looking at the synopsis like online and it was like, wait, what? How does this make sense? Yeah, it's kind it of like, very, yeah, it really <laughs> it's kind of just like, And then Ken just has you kind of read and mix up stuff there. Here, read this part, read that part. Yeah, read this part, so read that yeah. part. Yeah. Cold yeah. reading. There's really, Definitely. you know, you could maybe learn the stuff, but there's not much yeah. huge preparation for it. Yeah. Just get up there and he's going to try things. Well, we're going to take a quick break and come back and get into real depth uh, uh, talking about a flea in your ear. So we're going to, uh, uh, we want you to come right back because we're just right into the depths of talking about the play that uh, we're in production for. So come right back. From intimate black box performances in the Ender Hall Lab Theater to full-scale musical productions in the Anna Maria Saccone Theater, come to Bergen Community College at 400 Paramus Road in Paramus, New Jersey. For tickets or more information, call the box office at 201-447-7428 or visit us at tickets.bergen.edu. We'll be seeing you on Bergen Stages. Hi, and welcome back to Bergen Stages Television. I'm Jim Bumgarner, your host. Today, we are uh, meeting with uh, Kevin Bergen and Kayla Haskins, uh, two of the stars from our upcoming production, A Flea in Her Ear. And just before the break, we were talking about the audition process uh, of the show. Um, and so Ken had you guys reading some of the stuff and coming yeah, back. Cold reads. And, yeah, cold reads. Just cold reads. Yeah. Which means you don't have the script probably more than you know 15 minutes beforehand, yeah. and you get up on stage and read. Is Do you like that rather than doing monologues, or do you? You know, some auditions say come in and prepare I a monologue. I think I'd prefer a monologue because you just have, I think you know it better. And I think, yeah. I think obviously the actor would prefer the monologue because you like work you're on control it. Of it. And yeah, it's a totally piece that you're connected it. to. Yeah, 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 You've yeah, had time yeah. uh -huh. to prepare it and yeah. get used to it yeah, yeah. and make it your own. But I think sometimes here yeah. it would dissuade people from auditioning because they yeah. don't feel like they have their monologue yeah. ready. And so suddenly you don't have And there's so many other, like, there's so many kids in our show who are. Like one of them is a nursing major and he's in it, and he wouldn't know how to, you know, do that. And yeah, I get and that. so he wouldn't show up because he'd go, yeah. well, I don't know how to even do that. Yeah, to, to, but yeah so I think it works yeah. in this setting. I think uh, once you get out of here, that's not going to happen. But but in this setting, it tends to happen. Or yeah. at a callback, that's what you get at the callback. You've already done the monologues, and then you'll get cold readings yeah. from the mm -hmm. script once you get to, to to that point of the script. So so good. So you got cast and you started. Can you get guys help me give a synopsis of this play? Oh boy. I know. Um, I know we, I'll start you off. I know that you're a married couple. You yes. two are married We're to each married. other. You think he's being unfaithful to you because yes. he's not sleeping with you right now, shall we say it nicely. <laughs> um, so you're suspecting him of having an affair. Yes. Uh, and so what happens from that moment? Well, uh, from that moment, Raymond is uh, very eager to expose her husband and she's coming with all, she's coming up with all these different ways to catch him and her best friend Lucienne uh, devises a plan uh, she says we should write a letter uh, claiming to be a woman you know who is into him and see if he takes the bait uh -huh. and then he'll be caught uh -huh. <laughs> so you don't you don't write the letter I don't write the because letter. he would know your handwriting yes uh -huh. and so it's very <laughs> carefully done and it's it's just it's Lucienne hysteric. writes it. Yes, Lucienne, Lucienne writes, writes it, it for it's, you. Uh huh. And you know we we jazz it up and we make it very alluring to meet at the Frisky Puss Hotel. Yes, the Frisky <laughs> Puss Hotel. <laughs> And uh, yes. Which I love. All the guests are married, just not to each other, I think is the... Yes. <laughs> yeah. So now you get this letter. So, yeah. So Victor Emmanuel, who is the head of the Paris Life Insurance Company, he gets it and he is like, wow, I never got in a... I've never been smitten a lady before, uh -huh. he says. Well married. And, yeah, well, well married. married. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he, his buddy, Tornell, is there and his doctor is there to, um, I guess, examine this why he isn't exactly sleeping with his wife. Mm -hmm, there is, mm -hmm. there is so sort trying of to figure a, out what the... Yeah, there is sort of a medical uh -huh. thing that he thinks. <laughs> or psychological. Yes, yeah, so, or psychological. <laughs> um, and he reads it to them and he's like, wow, you know, I, I, I have this woman and, and I guess I'd be smitten her. And she, at the theater. At the theater. She that, says, yeah. I saw you at the theater yes. up in the booth, yeah. you know, up in the box. So, at, at the Pellet specifically. Uh -huh. and, he, and, she, and, uh, and then he realizes, oh, there's no specific name that it, she must have thought it was me because the box in the theater was in my name. Uh -huh. But Tornell, my buddy, was with who's me. Who's single. Yes, who's single. Tornell, yeah. Um, so he said, well, it must be for you. So why don't you go? I have a banquet anyway. So Tornell's like, no, no, I can't, you know. And he, so he's like, all right, I'll take it. So he goes to the Frisky Puss Hotel. Who is waiting for him? 
<laughs> Yours truly. Her is waiting for you to walk in <laughs> yes. the door of yeah. number five at the Frisky Post Hotel. And in walks Tornet. And in walks Tornet, who's already had a crush on you. Yes, sort of there's, right? been there's been a little bit of flirting mm -hmm. between Raymond and Tornell. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, but right. now that she believes that her husband is being unfaithful, she couldn't dream of even even considering having an affair, right, right, how could right, she? Right, right, right. She's being deceived. <laughs> He's doing it. <laughs> um, and the big twist is the mm. bellhop looks just like her husband. Looks just like her husband, who you <laughs> play who, both yeah, parts. Play, yeah, Posh. Um, so they think you're spying on them? What are they? They think that he is... He's on to them, basically. Yeah. He's on to them, and he's this dressed up own, as the bellhop. Yeah. This is his own little scheme to get back to them, and uh -huh. they're, they're losing their minds. Like, oh my god. And Posh... He knows. Like, because you're playing Posh, you're Posh. You're, yeah. He's kind of nips the bottle. And he's totally bit. confused by what they... He doesn't... You know, he's like, whoa. I mean, I also think like he's new on the job. Also, they say so. He, uh, I think he's like, I guess this is what it's like here. You know, everybody's kind of just like <laughs> <Yeah>. paranoid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just these crazy people there. But they really treat you badly. You yeah, know? they um, do. Uh, um, and then to top it off, the husband of Lucien finds the letter and knows it's her handwriting. Mm -hmm. So he thinks his wife's the one being unfaithful. So he with her with. Shonda with Victor Emmanuel. Yeah, 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 right. So uh, they come to the hotel. Yeah. They see you thinking you're not posh, that you're... And I am posh. When I am posh. You are posh, yeah, but yeah. they're thinking you're who... <laughs> it's... Yeah. 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 <laughs> but yeah. it's funny. It's funny. And it's a farce. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's slapstick. And that's just getting us through, you know, two-thirds of the play. Then we get back to, to the, uh, uh, the house after the whole Frisky Puss thing. And again, you're brought yeah. in as Posh. I'm brought in as Posh, and the thing is, is so Sean DeVees comes in, uh, Victor Emmanuel comes in, and he, the his, the boss, the the man in charge of the hotel, thinks he's Posh. Right. So he makes him put on his uniform. His fancy house. Yeah, and he yeah. takes off his coat, and he's like, "All right, I, you know, I guess I'll be the bellboy if you're gonna beat me." <laughs> so he comes in dressed as Posh, but he's actually Sean DeVees, and Posh is dressed as Sean DeVees because. <laughs> He figured somebody took his uniform, and the person who left, it's, it's only right that I take their clothes. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So he's dressed as Sean DeBees, and Sean DeBees <laughs> just as Posh, and, it's, and that's kind of, I guess, that unravels in the it's last just confusion. act. Yeah. It totally, it's total confusion, but uh, it's, and it's, I think David Ives' translation is great. I think what he's done with it, updating the language yeah. and, and just giving it um, a fresher look uh, to, yeah. to this Fado farce um, is fun. Uh, Complicated to do to direct to because you're in the blocking stage, right? You're still blocking yeah. it, or yeah, you? Yeah. It, yeah. So blocking means what? What do I mean by blocking? How we move across the stage, our motivation behind the words, like mm -hmm. like where we go. When. Yeah, where yeah. you go when you say what yeah. you say, mm -hmm. which as Ken's directing it, it's difficult because there's doors you're coming in and yes. out of and yeah. coming from different directions. There's definitely, it, it's it's interesting because it's a farce so it's all, it's based a lot about like what opens, what closes, who's there, what, when. Um, so it's weird without a set but I think once we have the set it'll be like, oh cool. It'll flow yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, being in the Saccoon Theater we can't have the theater till now. Uh, yeah. you, know, yeah. the, you know, it doesn't have, we don't have it the entire time um, so you don't get the set to start, yeah. it start you'll start seeing it grow now to, to be. But to even be, just like yesterday we added a window and, just I was like, like, yeah, and everybody started cool. laughing and I'm like, oh cool, like now there's, now we get to play now mm -hmm. build upon that. Yeah, so I'm excited yeah, for yeah, that. Yeah, and actually I've had the best time designing this. I have to, I have to, disclaimer there, I've designed this and it's got two sets that's really cool. And we had to get the window in first because everything is based off that window, believe it or not. Yeah, in the last the whole wow. rest of the set can't be built until that was in place and we knew where it was flying in. Uh, and then we can build the other walls so Man. it doesn't run into <laughs> it. So it was just one of those kind of, okay, now we know. Yeah. So now we can get to building. Oh, that's cool. And so Marie Natale is doing the costumes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, awesome. I know we did our, our photo for it, which are great. How do you like the costumes? You've tried things on? Yes? You've, you've yeah, we, yes. we have the, yeah. It's Costumes are beautiful. Set in 1910. 1910. Right? Yes. 1910. So it's great period for costumes and hair and, and all that kind of stuff. So that's 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 kind of fun. But you have rehearsal costumes you work in as well. Yes, yeah. we wear rehearsal skirt, our shoes. Why is that important? I, mean, I try to. It affects your posture mm -hmm. while you're in character. I, I think for me, definitely shoes is a big one. It's always yeah. good with characters. Because wearing shoes, shoes are you always just suddenly yeah feel exactly. Yeah, but. And I even like when I was post, I'd be wearing different. Like, when I would go into rehearsal, I'd wear a different set of shoes. And then when I was for each of them, oh, that's great. That's but I realized I only have one pair of shoes. Just made the costumes different. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to like give them a different walk for each one. Uh huh. Because it's like yeah, your yeah. entire range of motion is different when totally. you are 
even even the smallest piece of costume just helps. Right, right. Yeah, like, it, and it affects your posture, everything. So get it early. You know, yes. a, a lot of people wait to get anything until dress rehearsals, which is a few days before, and it's like that you can't develop yeah. what you want to do. So I think these rehearsal costumes are so important in the yeah. process, like even day one of the blocking. It, it adds like you said, changes your yeah. posture, how you're walking. You know, hard shoes change the different, or high heels or, or whatever. Yes, you tend to oh, the heels. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we have Graham Fry doing the lights, which again is a challenge because it's two different locations. We have the, the your home, uh, yeah. and then we go to the Frisky Puss Hotel, and then we come back to your home. So Graham's uh, uh, being challenged by that. Ooh, I can't wait to see what the light I know. Stephen Schwartz is doing our sound. You probably haven't worked with him yet, but I know they're thinking about Paris, 1910s. Oh, so cool. They're thinking accordion music uh, is kind of playing in the in the background, uh, especially change of scenes and things like that uh, of acts. So it's got that kind of uh, wonderful Ooh. music. Uh, Aaron Ingersoll is doing props. It's not a real proppy show. It's funny. It doesn't have like some shows have lots of food and things like that, but there's just specific things. I in think this. yeah. With the farce, it's more about the set because it's more about like. Just sitting and watching the picture go. Yeah, and it's mostly and about then, us too. Uh, it truly the, is about oh, you. Yeah. It's watching you, the great characters that you are, come and go through. And they're through, very through the exaggerated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Have you done a farce before, or is this the first time? I'm trying to think. A farce. I've never done like a play farce. Uh -huh. Is not. I, don't, I think this, no, is, this yeah. is my. But you know what I realized though that this is totally like this, like the father of farces, probably. Because there's characters in like even musicals and I think plays now that are totally based on like like Homena de Oh my mm -hmm. goodness! It's totally like so many characters. And, yeah, yeah. And I mean, theater. I think I, I think he took what Moliere had done with farces, and improved it so much more. You know, two hundred years later, took it and just said, "This is the yeah. way it needs to be done." I think it is. I think you have to model all farces off of of what Fine, he does yeah. with that. And and we were talking at the t beginning of the show that it takes a, almost a musical theater sensibility to it, right? There's it's yeah, almost choreographed. I, I was saying it's very it's very much could be a musical this mm -hmm, show because mm -hmm. it's so yeah it's very like. It's almost um, like if, I'm, if I was casting, I would want to see musical theater people saying, I know there's no songs on this, but <laughs> there are. I mean, it just, it just needs that energy to get through it. You can't come yes. in with, you know, streetcar named Desire oh, no. acting and there's like, no, no, no. Definitely no. It just, not. You're not going <laughs> to. Definitely not. <laughs> so now we're heading. So what happens now in the rehearsal process? Where do you, where do you go from here? So we've, do, once you finish the blocking, what goes on? Well, I know now, we talked about the scenery start coming in. Yeah, scenery. Which is going to help a lot. And now lines. When we get yeah, our lines, 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 lines. So, <laughs> The one so thing nice. nobody can do for you is your lines. Yes. <laughs> they can help with their makeup, but you're in costumes. But, yeah. So, uh, but and once this you is timing, lines, too. Talk like, about farce. It's not just about you going in the door when I'm coming out the door, but it's your line needs to be right on top of my yes. line. Yeah. It seems like there's sometimes two locations, so they're talking while they're talking over here, and you got to listen so much yeah. about what, you know, it's it's listening and timing and, and all that, so it's important to have everybody kind of there <laughs> yeah. uh, to, to work on all that time. Things are flowing a lot uh, faster now because everyone is picking up their lines, and with the blocking and everything, it's just flowing so much more smoother. So soon you'll start just running because yes. you'll finish all the blocks, so you just start running each of the acts um, uh, just to kind of get the yeah. continuity and the speed up. And then you get to dress rehearsals and tech rehearsals. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, <Woo. laughs> it's coming very fast. Yeah. I know. Um, it's really exciting. Um, uh, uh, the show opens December 1st uh, in the Saccone Theater, uh, and uh, I think we'll have a great audience. I think it's it's going to be a, a lot of fun. You guys will, uh, you know, I've peeked in. You haven't seen me. I've been peeking in the back of the theater <laughs> watching some of the stuff you guys have been doing, and it, it just looks like a lot of fun. So it's a, uh, uh, I know you got a challenge ahead of you, uh, but we get into dress rehearsals, final dress rehearsals, and then finally December first gets here. Mm -hmm. Anything, last thoughts before you head uh, uh, to opening night? Nothing really. It's just, it's a hysterical play. It's an absolute wonderful time and everybody should definitely come and see it. Cool, oh, cool. This is a very good time. That's oh, great. Boy. That's great. Well, that's a great plug for wrapping up our show. <laughs> so guys, it's just been the fastest show ever, um, but you guys have been great. Um, thank you for tuning in. Uh, it's A Flea in Your Ear. It's written by George Fido, but this is a modern adaptation by David Ives, and it will be shown in the Saccone Theater on December 1st's opening and run for two weekends. Uh, and it's a Friday, two shows on Saturday, a matinee on Saturday, and then the next weekend, Thursday, Friday, and two shows on Saturday. So you've got seven opportunities to catch it, and we hope we'll see you there. So thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you at the theater.